Yes, we're open. Living Faith with Needham UCC, a sermon podcast from the Congregational Church of Needham United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're invited and welcome. This sermon for Sunday, April 3rd, 2022, is entitled The Scent of Holiness. It's a reflection on a reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to find out more about our open and affirming ministries at the Congregational Church of Needham, United Church of Christ, simply head over to our website, www.needhamucc.org. Thank you. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament, from the Gospels, from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Today we read from Eugene Peterson's biblical paraphrase, The Message. Six days before Passover, Jesus entered Bethany where Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead, was living. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. Mary came in with a jar of very expensive aromatic oils, anointed and massaged Jesus' feet, and then wiped them with her hair. The fragrance of the oils filled the house. Judas Iscariot, One of Jesus' disciples, even then getting ready to betray Jesus, said, Why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would easily brought three hundred silver pieces. He said this not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but also embezzled them. Jesus said, Let her alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. Friends, God is still speaking to the world and to us. May our hearts be open to listen and to respond. Amen. There is such a strong and intimate connection between our sense of smell and our sense of memory. Something that just flips a switch inside us. Real estate agents know this. That's the reason that they bake cookies or now perhaps more commonly spray the artificial smell of baking cookies into a home before an open house. They know know that that puts us in a nostalgic and warm headspace. But there's nothing like the real thing. There's nothing like the smell of dog paws. Only those of you who are dog owners may know this, but if you put your nose right into a clean dog paw, it smells exactly like Frito's corn chips. If you don't believe me, you can try it yourself, hopefully with a dog you know. Or I think about the smell of a perfume that I have never seen before or since or smelt other than on my grandmother. It was a perfume called Tigress. I can remember the bottle had a little tiger print on it. And though I have not smelt it since she died, In 1988, I'm sure I would recognize it instantly. Maybe for you, it's something like a baseball field, that sense of new mown grass. Maybe it's the top of your baby's head, that special smell. Maybe it's your mom's Sunday sauce that signaled a family get-together. Maybe it's the sheets in a bed you share with your beloved. Maybe it's even the smell of fresh-baked bread. 
I hate to break it to the folks who are worshiping online today, but I brought in a bread machine, a liturgical bread machine, and baked bread here in the sanctuary, a beautiful dark rye and seeded loaf. And we'll share it a bit later, maybe on the way out. So I want to ask you, this isn't the interactive portion of the sermon. What are some of the smells that are hardwired to memories for you? I'm going to ask you to think about it in groups and share it, if you're willing. Here in the sanctuary, I'd ask you to turn as you're able, maybe move just a little bit, stay as safe as you feel necessary, but get so that you can be in conversation with perhaps four other folks. This would be the time for you to start doing that. Meanwhile, folks online, I'm going to send you into breakout groups so that you can do the same thing there. All right, folks online and folks uh, in the room, anyone like to share a special scent memory for us? Lucy. <laughs> so does that remind you of family times away lucy's saying that the place that they her family goes skiing they've got a waffle station and they serve chocolate on the waffles and that's a smell that i'm sure smells really good all on its own but it's also surrounded by memories of being with her family how about somebody online anyone uh you can go ahead and type it in the chat room there. Gretchen says that uh, they, rem they both remembered Sue's mom's cookies, special cookies. Cookies have a very, they feature very prominently in some of these memories, I think. Probably different kinds of cookies. Sue Turner says Thanksgiving turkey and chick chicken grilling. What else? Somebody in the room. Another smell? But let's get somebody outside your family. Go ahead. Suntan lotion on the beach. And isn't it really odd when something smells or tastes just like that? But thinking about times away on the beach. Oh, one more from the room. Anybody else? Yeah, Nora. The, oh, I like that. It's a very specific memory. The smell of your cat when he's been in front of the heater for a while. Does it smell like Fritos corn chips by any chance? No, something else entirely. Let's see. Oh, lots of memories there. Oh, grandparents' garage. The smell of a grand... My, uh, the house that I lived in that was my grandmother's house, in the shed there was a laundry room, and it smelled like laundry, and also there was a pencil sharpener. And the combined smell of laundry and pencil sharpener apparently lasts forever. Still there decades and decades later. Thank you all for sharing those and sharing them with one another. I'm going to share this memory for me. I have a very strong memory connected to the smell of tatami mats. Tatami mats are those mats of woven rushes that are used in the floor of traditional Japanese architecture. One whiff of that very particular smell, and I am transported back to a hot and lazy summer afternoon I spent lounging on the tatami mats at a Buddhist temple in Kyoto when I was living in Japan as an exchange student when I was 15 years old. Now, suffice it to say that that was both a wonderful and terrible year in life. But I remember those mats. And I remember that they were cool to the touch, even on a hot day. And the smell of them mingled with the incense being offered on the altar in the very next room. And I breathed it all in, and I felt my whole body relax and begin to drift, supported.
supported as though I were floating in a pool. To this very day, this is the image, that is the smell that I choose to remember when I need to remember to relax and breathe. Even just the memory of the smell of that place, of that entire experience, speaks directly to my body in a way that my conscious mind simply cannot. And like restaurant critic Anton Ego taking his first bite, his first whiff of Chef Remy's ratatouille in the Pixar movie of the same name, I am once grounded and transported. Now you may be asking, why am I spending all this time in church talking about smells? Or more to the point, why would I spend this precious sermon time, our precious worship time together, just the one hour out of 168 in a week to stop and smell the roses? With everything going on in the world. The ongoing and in some place worsening COVID pandemic, war in Ukraine, refugee crises in Europe, Central America, Syria, South Sudan, and Myanmar, anti-transgender, anti-gay, anti-woman legislation spewing forth from legislatures across the country, the persistent poisonous stain of racism, the climate crisis, the obscene and ever-widening gap between rich and poor in this country and globally, with all of this before us, don't we have more important things to talk about? More important work to be doing than playing scratch and sniff, let's remember. Which puts us in the rather odd position of perhaps agreeing with Judas Iscariot in our reading today. When he questions what he sees as Mary's waste of a great deal of costly perfume. Why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would easily have brought 300 silver pieces, nearly a year's wage. And the problem is, he's right. The gospel ministry to which Jesus called Judas and calls the rest of us disciples is consistently expressed in terms of love for our neighbor, care for the poor, and justice for the abused and oppressed. So where's the lie? Judas is so right, in fact, that the gospel writer takes pains to make sure that we know he's still wrong. Because while his mind was in the right place, his heart wasn't, as he was really, we're told, a thief. Not to mention the one who shortly will betray Jesus to the powers that be. But Jesus, but Jesus of all people, rebukes Judas and affirms Mary. Mary, sister of busy Martha, who chose the better part, we're told, to sit at Jesus' feet to listen and learn. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, who grieved his death until God's power was made manifest in Jesus, bringing her brother back to life. Mary, who on this night on the outskirts of Jerusalem, on the verge of what would turn out to be Jesus' last days, on the palpable, anxious edge of something terrible, as the lamp begin to gutter and dim after dinner and the shadows gather, Mary takes a jar of precious aromatic oils. Expensive enough, it's true, to one day provide her wedding dowry, perhaps, or to embalm the body of a departed loved one. But Mary doesn't wait. She takes the jar and breaks it and anoints Jesus' feet. She even uses her own hair to massage it in so intimate. 
the words of the prophet Isaiah learned as a little girl running through her mind as she does. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. And the smell, oh, the smell, it fills the entire room. This is the smell of her beloved Jesus, her friend, her Savior, whom she will remember always. This is the smell of wholeness. It fills her nostrils and her mind and her heart to overflowing. Yes, that perfume could have been sold and spent for a more practical purpose, perhaps a good gospel purpose, even the relief of the poor. But once it was spent and that little good accomplished, it would be gone. And the poor, as even Jesus reminds us, the way our world works, the poor will always be with us. There will always be folks in need. No one action, no one donation, no matter how grand, is ever going to solve that problem completely. Systemic sins can only be solved by systemic change, which doesn't mean we shouldn't try. We have to try. But in that struggle, Nearly endless as it is, not just a lifetime struggle, but the struggle of lifetimes. Ultimately, it's not money that will keep us going. It's spirit. It's encounters with God, the divine, the really real in the everyday, in our everyday relationships with everyday people. It's holiness and the memory of of holiness. Whether she realizes it consciously or not, by spending that perfume, some would say wasting it that way, Mary has created an anchor in holiness that will hold her fast in the dangerous, painful days for the rest of her life as a disciple of Jesus, that smell, even just the memory of that smell, will simultaneously ground her and transport her, fuel her and refuel her. It will remind her why she chooses to live the way she does, to love the way she does, in imitation of the Lord at whose feet she once sat the one who died for love and was raised again for love, who will win the world for love and will reign in love forever and ever, all everyday evidence to the contrary. That memory and that hope, that scent of holiness is now bound up in her body, her blood and her bones forever. Friends, as you make your way through the world, as we make our way together, seek out the scent of holiness in your own lives. Seek it out. Sit with it. Sanctify it. Seek it out and hold on to it with your whole heart. Remember it. And when everything feels as though it's about to fall apart and take you with it, let the scent of holiness remember you and remind you, God, Jesus, the divine, the holy is with you always just beneath the surface. So go ahead. Scratch and sniff. And so, friends, if you have heard 
and seen and touched and smelled the living word of God here today. Remember to give all honor to our one God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.